Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what we're gonna do is solve more pulley problems. Now I have a lot of videos on pulley problems. I'll put uh, some of them linked below in the description. One of them is six pulley problems. I solved another one with multiple pulleys uh, tension problem. Today what we're gonna do is solve two additional problems. Now the reason, well I've been working with a student recently on these problems and I think they're pretty interesting. Uh, they're not quite as obvious as some of the other ones that I've solved for. So here they are. I have different setups of two masses. The first problem has a single rope, but it kind of loops around two pulleys. Now on the second problem, uh, the arrangement is different. Again, mass M1 and M2. In this case, there are two strings. Um, and the goal for both of these problems is going to be to find the acceleration of the blocks and also to find the tension in the strings. All right, now, like with all my videos, if you like it, you give it a thumbs up. You consider subscribing to my channel. And another great way to support Physics Ninja is now to use Super Thanks. You go on the bottom of this video. If you like it, if you can afford to give a dollar or two, it goes a long way to help Physics Ninja. All right, let's get started. All right, so here's problem one. My goal is to take this configuration here, and my goal is to find the acceleration and the tension in the string. So the first thing we do is we're going to do a free body diagram. So here's the block M1. Well, guess what? There is a weight acting on it. It's M1G. Now it's resting on that surface. So I'm going to call a normal force N acting up. And there is one string connected to it right here. So again, you should have some tension T in that string. There is no friction between the block and that surface. So that's it. You're done for that block. Uh, the other block I can do is M2. So let me go ahead and just uh, sketch that one out over here. So we have the block M2. And I'm also going to do a free body diagram on this pulley over here. And you're going to see how they're all connected to each other. Let me add that red dot right at the center of that pulley. All right, so for the block M2, it's pretty straightforward, right? You have the weight acting down, which is M2G. And now there is also this connector right here. It's connected to this, um, to that pulley. So I'm going to call this tension T2. All right, so far so good. And that's it. Those are the two forces acting on block M2. Now let's look at the pulley. The pulley is also connected from that center by that same string. So this is the tension T2 acting on the pulley. And now if you look at what's pulling up on the pulley, there are those two strings that loop around. I'm going to make those in green, and each one of those is a value T. All right, so that is it for the free body diagram. Now, if you were going to let the system go, I would probably guess that you would have an acceleration A1 in this direction, and I would probably guess that I'm going to have an acceleration A2 in this direction for that block. All right, that would be a pretty good guess. So guess what? I'm going to call that my positive direction, and I'm going to call that my positive direction for the block A2. Our next step now is simply to write Newton's second law. All right, for the block M1, if I'm looking at this horizontal direction, there's simply uh, one force. So we simply have tension equals to MA, except we're looking at block M1 times the acceleration of block 1, which I'm calling A1. All right, how about for the pulley? Uh, for the pulley, what we have here, we have two tensions acting up and we have T2 acting down. The pulley is going to drop, okay? So I'm going to call T2 positive. T2 is down minus 2T acting up equals. Now, in this case, we are neglecting the mass of the pulley. So you could write mass of the pulley times acceleration of the pulley. However, in the case of no mass for the pulley, you simply set it equal to zero. And right away, you can see from this expression that T2 has to be equal to twice the tension. Or the tension equals to T2 divided by 2, if you rearrange that equation. All right, now we look at M2. Well, what does M2 look like? Again, I'm choosing down to be positive. Again, so in this case, I would have M2G minus T2 equals to M2 times the acceleration of that block. All right, so what can we do right away? Well, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate uh, the T2 from this expression because I can eliminate T2 from that expression just using that pulley equation right here. 
So instead of writing it in terms of T2 right away, I'm simply going to erase that and write it out as twice the tension. Okay, so I'm going to call this here equation 1, and I'm going to call this equation 2. What we have here are two, un uh, two equations, and we have still three unknowns, right? The unknowns are the tension, and we have acceleration of block 1 and acceleration of block 2. So how do we resolve this? We need at least one additional equation in order to solve for the system. So my goal now is to look at uh, the system and try to make a connection between both accelerations of the block. So let me show you how we're going to do that here. Consider this uh, situation right here. Okay, so this is my starting configuration here on the left. Uh, M1 starting up here, M2 is over here. Once you release it, and we said that the acceleration of the block is going to be uh, to the right like this, and M2 is going to drop, have a look at what's going to happen. So M1 might move some distance X1. And now if that happens, what does it mean? So the length of the rope does not change in this problem. Eh? It's a single string that wraps around. So if M1 moves this way, and M2 moves down a certain distance, those have to be linked together. And the link is this. If this moves X1, it means this guy here has to drop a distance of half of X1. And you also have to have half of X1 go down over on this side. So if you add both of those additional lengths, what you end up getting is the length here at the top that the block has moved. But the amount that this has dropped here has to be equal to that position x2. So this is what the statement looks like. So x1 must, or sorry, one half of x1 has to be equal to x2, right? You see that from this diagram here on the right-hand side. So what does that mean? Well, again, that means that x1 must be equal to 2 times x2. So the, the position change of x1 is twice the position change of x2. Or the position change of x2 is half the motion of x1. If you differentiate this two times, what you end up getting is the acceleration then are linked together through this expression right here. Okay, And this is what we're going to use to be our third equation that links both of those variables. All right, now I add my third equation here. Uh, a1 is equal to 2A2. And that's the third equation. All right, so now I have a system of equations that I can solve. Uh, so let's go ahead and eliminate one of the accelerations, and I do that using equation A3. So what I'm going to do right away is let's go rewrite them. So here we have equation 1 is going to be T is equal to M1. Instead of writing A1, I'm going to write it as 2 times the acceleration of 2. Now for equation 2, what I'm left with was M2G. Now be careful here, you have minus 2T equals to M2A2. All right, well, we're just about done. Now I have negative um, 2T in the second equation, and I have plus T over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce another 2 over here. And whatever I do on the left-hand side, I have to do on the right-hand side. All right, now we're in a position to manipulate these equations. You could solve these a lot of different ways, but in the first equation, I have plus 2t. In the second equation, I have minus 2t. So I'm left with m2g here if I add both of those equations up. If I multiply those twos, I get 4m1 multiplied by a2 plus m2. And all of these get multiplied by the acceleration of block number 2. So that's it. I'm now in a position to write the final expression. So my acceleration for uh, that block M2 is simply this, uh, M2G. But look at this denominator. It's four times the mass M1 plus M2. That is my expression for the acceleration of block A2. Right away, you can then write acceleration of block A1. A1 is simply two times this value. So you get two times M2G divided by 4 times m1 plus m2. That's it for that problem. So you now have the accelerations of the blocks. How can I now find the tension? Well, I can find the tension t, for example, by looking at the first equation. The tension t is equal to m1 times the acceleration of block a1. Well, that's right here. 
So you can right away write, um, just multiply acceleration A1 by M1. So I would have 2 M1 M2G divided by 4 times M1 plus M2. All right, that is how you solve this problem. We have everything we need in this system. You can also solve for that tension T2 here between the pulley and the block M2 because you have this relationship here for the pulley. It's simply twice this value. All right, that's it for problem one. Let's move on to problem two. All right, so here we have problem two. Uh, what we're going to do now is, again, start with our free body diagram. That's always a safe bet. <laughs> Here we have M1G acting down. Again, there's going to be some normal force here uh, acting up. And now M1 is connected by a single string, connected at that point. So all we have here is one tension. I'm going to call it T. Now one thing to notice about this problem, there are two different strings here. Okay, so be a little bit careful, but there's only one that's connected to M1. All right, how about that pulley now? Well, that pulley... What we have here is we're going to have two of these tensions acting in this direction. And I'm going to have a different tension. Let's call it over here because there is one pulling on it and then over going over in a second pulley. But this one I have to call it T2, something different. How about block M2? Block M2 has a weight acting down, M2G. And now what is connected to it? Well, which string is connected to it? It is the second string. And in that one here, we have a tension T2. All right, next thing we have to do is uh, pick a coordinate system for this problem. So again, if I let the system go, I'm probably going to guess that M2 is going to drop down. So I'm gonna choose that to be the positive direction and it's going to have some acceleration A2. I'm probably also going to guess that the block M1 is going to move in that direction. I'm going to call that the positive direction, and it's going to have some acceleration A1. So now we write down Newton's second law for the blocks. So we start with block M1. We only have one tension. That's it. So that there must be equal to M1 multiplied by A1. There's a first equation. How about the pulley? Uh, the pulley we have T2 minus 2t and again what we have here is we're neglecting the mass of the pulley so therefore it's zero on this side so here we have two equation two so right away from equation two you can see that t2 is equal to 2t we can make a similar substitution to what we did in the first problem how about block m2 so we have m2g acting down i'm taking that to be the positive direction Minus, I have tension T2 acting up equals to M2A2. Again, right away now, I'm just going to eliminate T2 as a variable. And I can right away just write this in terms of the tension in the first string at the top. Okay, so I am again left with the problem of having three unknowns and these two equations right here. The unknowns are tension A1 and A2. So we have to now go back and think about how those accelerations are connected because I do need a, another equation in order to solve this system. All right, so our goal is to link those two accelerations again and just consider this system. So imagine the total length of this first string here is L, okay? So and imagine I have it set up so I have approximately L over two here at the top and L over two at the bottom, okay? Now, as this pulley moves, this pulley here has the same uh, it's going to move the same distance as the block M2, right? So this pulley here is going to move a certain distance X2, and it started over here, right? That is how much that pulley is going to move as that mass M2 falls the same distance. But look at how far the block M1 has moved. It has moved a distance of X1. So right away, you should be able to see that for this case, X1 moved a distance of L, right? It started over here and it's moved L over two plus another L over two. How far has the pulley moved? Well, the pulley moved only X2 moved L over two. <laughs> so what do we have over here? That means that the position X1 is actually two times the displacement, sorry, of block M2 or of the pulley. So again, if you differentiate this two times, what you end up getting is the acceleration of one 
is equal to twice the acceleration of the hanging mass. And that's kind of the key to this problem. Once you figure that out, now we go back to our systems of equation and we have another equation. All right, so let me add that equation. A2, uh, sorry, A1 is equal to 2A2 and call this equation four. All right, so all we have to do now is again, just very, very similar to what the other problem was. Uh, let's go ahead and write the first equation. So we have T equals to M1. And instead of writing A1, I'm just gonna write everything in terms of uh, acceleration A2. Uh, equation three that I had here was M2G. Now careful, minus 2T equals to M2A2. All right, now I have 2t in the third equation and I only have t in the first equation. So I need to multiply both sides by two. All right, now I could eliminate the two t's by adding up both equations. And look what you get, m2g is equal to, now you group all the terms so you get 4m1 plus m2 <laughs> is acceleration a2. a2 looks exactly the same as the previous problem but it's a different configuration. Okay, so this is what we get here for that acceleration A2. Uh, we can go ahead now and find the acceleration A1 is just twice that value. And over 4M1 plus M2, box that equation up. And the tension now you can also find from the first equation, our tension again is M1 times A1. So it's 2m1, m2g over 4m1 plus m2. All right, folks, that's it for me. Hopefully you appreciate this problem. Um, appreciate how you link these accelerations together. That's kind of the key to these problems. We'll see you next time.